It's been eight months since health authorities in China issued their first warnings about the coronavirus. The Wuhan Health Agency sent this letter to the World Health Organization on December 31st, where it warned about 27 pneumonia cases with serious respiratory symptoms. At the time, the World Health Organization officials advised against imposing any travel or trade restrictions and said only caution should be exercised. According to the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, 27 cases have become over 25 million and at least 800,000 people have died with the virus. After weeks of lockdown where billions stayed at home, social distancing has entered the lexicon. Mask wearing is now mandatory and many countries are facing serious economic consequences with unemployment at record highs. Well, let's find out a little bit more about the current situation. Marika van der Veff is a public health emergency manager at the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control and joins us now. Thank you very much for speaking to us. We are seeing, I've just spoken about what's happening in Spain, but in France, Belgium, increasing numbers of daily new infections. Why are we seeing those and why are we seeing something different now as we were a few months ago with rising numbers of daily new infections but the number of hospitalizations and the number of deaths not raising as we might have expected? Um, we currently see more than 2 million cases in the European Union and the European Economic Area and 180,000 deaths have been reported. Um, you know that member states have implemented uh, huge measures that stopped the interaction between people and therefore also stopped the transmission of the virus. And therefore, in June, we, show, we saw that the, the number, the cumulative number of coronavirus patients was lowest by then. It was then about 14 per 100,000 population. And indeed, uh, now we see an increase. It has been increasing for one and a half months. It's now at 46 per 100,000. And uh, that is related to the relaxing of the measures by the member states. So uh, people are interacting more. And uh, the question is how far they are adhering to the measures still in place, especially the physical distancing, hand washing, cough hygiene, staying at home when you have symptoms uh, and uh, other measures that are at national level in place. It seems to be that the people who are now getting the virus are younger, younger people in their 20s and 30s going out, traveling, coming back from countries where maybe the infection rate is higher. But why aren't we seeing the same rises, as I asked before, in hospitalizations or the number of people dying with it? Uh, if you look at the epidemiology, the first thing you will see is a rise in the number of notified cases then it takes a bit of time before people develop such severe symptoms that they would need a hospitalization. So hospitalization is always a bit later than the rise in cases. At the moment, we do see a rise in hospitalization and also in ICU, uh, but it's not in all member states yet. We see that in uh, six member states at the moment. If you then look at the death rate, that would come even later. So you. Uh, after hospitalizations increase, you would expect an increase in the death rate. Currently, the death rate is stable in the European Union and the European Economic Area, except for in Spain. In Spain, we also already see a rise in the number of COVID-19 uh, deaths. So it's a measure, of, it's a matter of the timing. You first see an increase in cases, then in hospitalization, and only after that in death. So you're anticipating that that structure will continue to be the same despite the number of cases uh, in younger populations. To what extent are you concerned about fatigue to things like social distancing measures, to people not adhering to quarantine periods put in place? For how long do you anticipate that the population actually across Europe will adhere to the measures that the governments have put in place? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And of course, we are looking uh, in uh, the fatigue to the measures. There are studies ongoing that uh, study whether people still adhere to the national measures put in place. And um, well, it, it's, it's a big concern. Uh, we think it's still it's super important that people keep the physical distancing and all the other measures that are in place, that they adhere to it as good as they can. Because if we start seeing increases in number of cases and hospitalizations, then we might end up in the same situation as we were in April, May this year. And uh, this I don't think anyone wants.